Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1090. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about three tips from Warren Buffett during a market downturn. Because I know this downturn is very emotional for a lot of people. It's been devastating this first half of the year. But I do think that things are about to take a turn for the better. But in the meantime, what does Warren Buffett have to tell us to think about during times like this? So the first thing that Warren Buffett has to say during a market correction is to not panic. And don't start selling a stock just because it's going down. He says you have to stay objective and detach yourself temperamentally from the crowd to be a good investor. It doesn't take brains, it takes temperament. I think that's such a good point because our emotions can really get the best of us. And I feel strongly about having a wealthy mindset and how important that is. It's so important, I made it step one of the six steps to wealth. A wealthy mindset tells you not to panic. It stays calm. It stays confident in what you've invested in and why you made good decisions to invest in those things. What Warren Buffett says is, quote, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And he actually wrote that in his 2017 Berkshire Hathaway shareholder letter. So apparently Warren Buffett thinks a wealthy mindset is very important too. And I think the main point is you don't want to panic and do things out of panic and for the wrong reasons, things that you'll regret. Those very stocks or those very ETFs that you could be selling now because you're panicking could very well be the next ones to rise and could be forming a bottom and rebounding off that bottom. They could be the next investments that people are finding good value in and seeing that the price looks really attractive. So right about the time people tend to panic at the bottom is usually the time some savvy investors are looking for those kinds of opportunities and are buying those very same things. Buffett also talks about the fact that the stock market is priced daily, but many of our assets that we own are not priced daily. For example, the homes that we own. We don't know what the day-to-day price is on our home, but if we bought a home for a certain price and then later someone offered us a lower price, you wouldn't rush to sell just because the price went down. And the same thing goes for stocks. You're investing in businesses. And if you own a piece of a great business, why should you sell it just because someone wants to offer you less for it? In a 2015 interview, Buffett said, if you are worried about corrections, you shouldn't own stocks. I mean, if you can't take your stock going down, it is going to go down sometimes if you own a stock, so why worry about it? The point is that you buy something that you like at a price that you like and then hold it for 20 years. You should not look at it day to day. If you bought a farm or an apartment house, you wouldn't go get a quote on it every day or every week or every month. So it's a terrible mistake to think of stocks as something that bob up and down and that you should pay attention to all those bobs up and down. So he's really telling us to focus on the long term, think about the companies that we want to invest in, make wise investments, and then see them through without worrying about short-term fluctuations. So if that's the case, when does Warren Buffett recommend that we sell the stock? Well, according to Buffett, there are three possible circumstances when you should sell a stock. One is when something better shows up. If a better investment comes along, something that you like even more, especially if you have limited funds to invest, then he said you could consider buying that new stock. But remember, you may have taxes to pay and transaction costs, You definitely want to look at, do you have short-term gains 
or long-term gains if you have gains or losses? And can you match those in your portfolio against other short-term or long-term gains or losses? Therefore, he says, if you factor in the extra costs, the taxes and transaction fees, and there is a gap between the sell area and the buy area in which it might be better to do nothing at all and just keep your original stock. The second reason to sell a stock is when the economic characteristics of a business change in a major way. For example, Buffett sold his positions in the airlines in 2020, saying that the world had changed for airlines due to the pandemic and he no longer understood the sector. And the third reason to sell is when a single holding gets too big. If one investment becomes the majority of your investments or even a big percentage of your investments, you really have to stop and think, is this something that you wanna have such a big concentration in or do you wanna lighten up a little bit and diversify? And the third thing Buffett talked about in a market downturn is when should you buy more of a stock? Well, the market does have corrections and every so often it has stronger corrections, those that are 20 to even 50%. So you definitely wanna consider those as buying opportunities when great stocks are trading at discounts. He cautions though that no one should buy a stock only because the price has gone down. Lehman Brothers looked incredibly cheap in 2007, but that would not have been a very good investment decision. There's reasons why certain companies have low prices. Some of the things that you wanna look for with great companies, are they really great businesses? Do they have big moats around them? Meaning like a castle moat where it's difficult for another business to compete with them. Do they have a strong brand? Do they have a great management team? Perhaps even leadership in the industry and low capital expenditures could also be strong points. Once you've identified the companies in your portfolio that are great businesses that you'd be willing to keep for the next 10 years, then evaluate if thanks to the correction, the stock is undervalued and has a good margin of safety and might just be a great time to buy. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button to notify you when new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.